Hi, welcome to Music Scene. I'm Adam Mentley. Today my guest is Elysian Fields. Elysian Fields is from the Mount Pleasant area and has been playing throughout the Midwest. Uh, my first question is, uh, what makes Elysian Fields uh, different from other bands today? <coughs> well, I think we're the kind of band that can stand on our own. We don't need a revival or a movement to support us. Um, it's like me and Mark and Tim have been playing music together for the last three and a half years. And there's been a lot of different kinds of music that have become popular. Like there's been a 60s revival and hardcore was popular a couple years ago. And more recently, bands like R.E.M. and U2 have started a whole new wave of sound-alike rip-off type bands. And we've always remained separate from that. Because uh, like when we listen to music, and we don't, we try to keep our minds open and we try not to become too infatuated with one band and one certain style of music. And instead of having our sound blend into a certain style of music, we take that style of music and blend it into our sound. So you're basically playing all types of music, right? Okay. At once. At once. At, at one time. That's great. <laughs> Pretty tough of it. Reggae, uh, funk, metal. Okay. Um, I understand you're quite a socially conscious band. What message are you trying to convey and uh, what issues are you trying to address? Um, we're not trying to hit really any specific issues because we don't write political songs um, as far as from a political standpoint because we're not politicians. But uh, we do see a lot of things that we don't like we think are wrong and should be changed. Uh, we see a country that uh, spends too much time emphasizing material wealth and material gain and not enough time uh, taking care of its environment, taking care of the land that, that it's on. Uh, a country that uh, doesn't know how to take care of its toxic waste because the big corporations spend more time trying to develop them less time trying to find a way to put them somewhere. Um, the way that uh, we treat the ocean with all the waste and stuff that go into the water, which is really foolish. Um, just a lot of things that we think should be done differently. Um, like I said, you know, we don't have answers. We don't have a specific outline saying, this has to be done and that has to be done, and we have a lot of questions. And without questions, there wouldn't be any answers. We want, what we really want to do is to open people's eyes a little bit so they can see these things that are going on and to pay attention to what's happening on their own planet because it's going to affect what happens to their children and their children's children. And if we don't have a healthy planet to live on, then there's no point in even being around. So we want to open people's eyes so they can, can make a difference in the future, because it can happen if we really want to. Are a lot of your songs um, based <clears throat> on their beliefs like that? Um, like I said, you know, it isn't specific. We don't, uh, you know, lay it on the line. We don't write songs about the starving people, and we don't write songs about the homeless, but we do include those kind of thoughts and those mm -hmm. kind of positive ideas in our music and stay away from the top 40 love songs and we stay away from the heavy metal uh, songs about killing and being Rambo and you know we just want to keep things positive and keep things <laughs> a, a lot of our music is thematic our lyrics are thematic and right. you know mention specifics but tend to be more <laughs> circumferencing yeah well just like a song called Say Goodbye, the opening line is Say Goodbye to the Past. You know, just let's think about what's going to happen now in, in the next 40 years. Because that's what's going to happen. You know, that's what's going to be important. You can't change what went on. You can't change what happened in the past. You can't change Vietnam. You know, you can sing about Vietnam all you want, because there's a lot of bands that do, but there's nothing you can do. It's, it's happened. All we can do is try to keep that from happening again. You've got to learn from it and relate it to the present. Learn from our for mistakes. the benefit of the future. Very well said. Uh, what methods are you using to reach your audience? Um, we try to play live as much as we can. And a few months ago, 
we recorded a four song demo tape and we include that and a press kit which a lot of our pictures are included in that live pictures and uh, just shots of us playing our guitars or drums or whatever we do and uh, it it includes lists of venues that we've played and we send that all across the country and and try to get booked at, at new places that we've never played so other people can see us and we rely a lot on word of mouth and we're making t-shirts right now and you know if people come and see us and buy a t-shirt and someone comes up and and sees them wearing a t-shirt in two weeks that they purchased at one of our shows are gonna say who's that band if they've never heard of us and maybe they'll come out and see us at some other city or the next time we play at that at that club um, in April we're gonna record an album which will contain probably seven or eight songs and you know hopefully we can have some some sort of success with that show show people who we are it's a slow process mm -hmm. but um, you know it's the only way to do it we're not gonna be you know we're not Elvis Presley we're not gonna get grabbed right now we're mm -hmm. not gonna be on some big label because that's not really what we want to do we want to be as the struggles as have to fun yeah, the struggles have to Um, Where are you planning on being, or where do you want to be in about a year from now? Well, we probably want a, a network set up so we can just play all the time, not rely on our day jobs. We can just go and play like four or five nights a week and just play constantly, almost like a, a tour. We just have to go around and play and play and play. We can just completely quit our day jobs. And our album should be out by then. And by then, maybe we want, might want to record another one. It depends how the first one goes. If it gets a good reaction, we might do another one. Well, first we've got to develop a following. Yeah. Because if we yeah. don't have a following, we don't have people that are going to come and see us play, then you know, we might as well pack it in. So well, that's what the first album is hopefully going to help do. The album is the big push. I mean, that's that's what's going to get us discovered one way or another you know whether it's a record label or just people you know okay um on this album um i understand that you shot a video off of it um can you tell us a little bit about that mm, well what was it like was it really fun or yeah it was, it was a great time it was neat it was sat in our basement where we practice and it was just basically a lot of live footage um, to the song Till which was the intro song to this show and just a lot of videotape a lot of editing some effects and it turned out pretty neat running around outside in the rain and sliding yeah. in the mud <laughs> pushing each other around in chopping carts it was <laughs> it was fun yeah it was good time it was capturing us in our own environment I yes. guess in our own element Hope to maybe see it on, on TV. Uh, it's been sent to basement tapes, so. Is it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> okay. Well, um, a little while ago, Elysian Fields uh, did a little concert here. And uh, we're going to take a look at that right now. 